Welcome to Location, a local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Memser, and here's your news now. Irish exchange student Matt McColgan is spending this school year at Cabrini. Originally from Belfast, McColgan is now in his second semester here and has been welcomed by students. Although it was originally a culture shock coming to America, McColgan also studied at a prep school in New York. December 2010 graduate and English major Shannon Fandler recently won an award for her short story called The Indian. For winning the award, her story will be published in a national biannual journal that circulates to 20,000 people. This is the second year that Fandler has been recognized with this award. Cabrini College offers several study abroad opportunities. These opportunities are open to students as early as second semester of freshman year. Students can study abroad for an entire year, a full semester, or can enroll in a short-term study abroad course. As part of Cabrini's new curriculum with a global emphasis, study abroad encourages students to have a better understanding of other cultures. Relay for Life started in 1985 to raise money for the American Cancer Society. Last year was the first time Cabrini got involved and it turned out to be a huge success. This year's walk will begin on March 26 and will last without a break for 16 hours in the Dixon Center. And these are your top stories in The Loquitur. For more on any of these stories, please check it out at theloquitur.com. Let's check in with Melissa for Make It Monday. Hi, I am Melissa Webb in the Marketplace for Make It Monday, a cooking demo with Chef Rodney on how to make healthier options in the kitchen. Today's dish is fish. To begin this healthy meal, using a nonstick pan results in a better outcome. Chef Rodney says you want to use olive oil, which is healthier than all other cooking oils. A combination of orange juice and butter makes up the orange sauce. Next, he sauteed spinach. Baked cod with parsley and ginger, jasmine rice, and sauteed spinach completes the dish. The guests approve. The meal was a success. Mmm, that was great. Back to you at the news desk. Studies show that the Latino graduation rate is very low in the public school system throughout the country. Our interconnected hemisphere has a new ECG program where students get the opportunity to mentor the Spanish-speaking students of the Norristown Area School District in hopes to help them graduate and receive funds for college. Cabrini's engagements with the Common Good classes offer special opportunities for students to do something extraordinary in the community and beyond. One four-year ECG series entitled Our Interconnected Hemisphere is comprised of Spanish majors and minors who work in the Norristown Area School District as mentors to the high school's Spanish-speaking students. Dr. Cynthia Halpern explains the program. The Latino graduation rates across the country are uh, very low, and we would like somehow to contribute to that and help in, in ways that we think we can by community organizing by working with Latinos, by believing in them, and helping them in any way that we can to find funding later for scholarships, perhaps for college or for trade school, or even to find funding to get them more permanent help in the school system where they have people that speak Spanish and that understand them, that are culturally competent workers to work with them and their families. The program intern, Lisa Gomez, attributes her dedication and passion for the program to her family, who has always been an inspiration to her. My parents are very encouraging and they want us, they want the best for us. My mom, she works at a, at a school. Um, she's a teacher's aide. She's, <laughs> she's been here for maybe, what, 30 years or more? And she still doesn't know how to speak English, um, but she does understand it. So, And she does speak a little bit. I mean can't bash her for that, but you know, I love her and my dad, um, he works at a factory and he's been working there forever, I mean, since I was young. Um, so they've, they've, I mean, they've provided everything for us. The first ECG 200 class ended successfully in December with a Christmas party celebrating the high school students and their families. 
Norristown administrators were in attendance. The children, the children, you know, you're our future. You're our future. You're our future. We need you to be the best you can be. The program is continuing this semester and already has an increased number of student involvement. For location, I'm Danielle Alio. And now let's take a trip around the world. Protesters filled the streets of several cities in Egypt on Tuesday, demanding that President Mubarak's 30 years as head of the country end. Security forces struggled to keep the demonstration under control. The demonstration turned violent as police opened fire on the demonstrators. President Mubarak struggled to maintain power on Saturday as the police withdrew and military did not do anything to hold demonstrators back. Mr. Mubarak fired his cabinet and appointed the country's intelligence chief as vice president. Wednesday morning, Mubarak said he would not run for president again in September. President Obama has not openly pushed for Mr. Mubarak's res resignation since the country is an important American ally. The street riots in Egypt has Israel officials and military in a state of confusion. The officials are rethinking their strategy for regional relationships. The diplomatic strategies in Israel rely on peace with Egypt. If President Mubarak is driven from power, diplomatic relations between the countries would be in question. Afghanistan's largest bank has a loss of as much as $900 million due to fraud and misconduct. This raises concerns of a bank collapse which could cause a large financial panic in Afghanistan. The government is determined to keep the bank running. This would require a large sum of money from the budgets that's already low. Investigators believe the money has gone into the pockets of privileged Afghans. And now is your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Liz for our Person of the Week. Hi everybody, I'm Liz and I'm on location for Person of the Week. Today we have Father Janicki with us to talk about his experience at Cabrini. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, this is your second semester as Cabrini's Director of Campus Ministry. Could you tell us what drew you to Cabrini and what your experience has been like so far? Uh, the experience has been tremendous. Uh, everyone's been so welcoming. All the staff, the students, uh, making sure that I know my way around. Uh, making sure that I know who to go to when I have certain questions. So I found it to be a very uh, welcoming environment. And then the way that they've included me uh, into the community with ideas and opportunities to be of service uh, has been very beneficial. I was attracted to Cabrini because previously I had worked at Cardinal Doherty High School and we always sent a student or two from the high school to Cabrini and they always excelled. As a matter of fact, one of our better students was a communications major. Uh, and she actually got to do a TV commercial, and she was on the TV commercial while she was here uh, at Cabrini. So I always knew students who were here, uh, and they always spoke so highly of it. You mentioned Cardinal Doherty yes. as your previous position. Mm -hmm. Do you think working there helped you prepare for your role here? And what could you tell our audience what some of your responsibilities entail? The responsibilities here, there's a staff that we work with to provide <coughs> ministry opportunities. Uh, for the students, the faculty and the staff that's here, uh, as well as provide ministry to uh, the faculty and staff that is here. So offer prayers, uh, put uh, prayer services together, offer service opportunities, uh, spring break trips, uh, to prepare retreats throughout the year, to celebrate liturgies and different moments as they arise uh, throughout the year, and then to encourage the students to generate ideas themselves so that what the students are interested in, they have an opportunity to provide uh, that service uh, to the community as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, you worked as the spiritual director for um, Cardinal Doherty's Appalachia Service, right. and you also went to Mexico. Right. Could you tell us what made you decide to travel to such a far distance and do service there? Yeah, it actually started in uh, January of 1995. I had the opportunity to go to the Philippines for World Youth Day. It uh, was Pope John Paul II uh, hosted World Youth Day uh, every other year throughout the world. That year it happened to be in the Philippines. So I went to Manila, uh, saw the poverty there, saw the great uh, faith of the people. The closing mass, uh, there were 8 million people uh, at the mass with the Pope. Uh, and came back from that and said, why would I have to go to the Philippines uh, to be able to do uh, service uh, and to find people who were in need? So kind of looked around the country talked to some of the students to see what they were interested in 
and we would run a trip to Appalachia to do community development, uh, home renovation, uh, meet with the people, learn from them, um, see what was going on in their lives uh, and how it was different from the lives that we were living in Philadelphia. And then out of that experience grew the desire from the students to have something a little bit more. And that's where we added uh, the trip to uh, Arizona. And we would go to the Indian Reservation and then we grew that and we went to an Indian Reservation in Montana. So the opportunity there is they got to see another culture without having to leave the United States. Thank you uh, sure. so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you. Good. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate it. And uh, now back to you at the news desk. Now let's check in with Holly for your weekly sports update. What do you have for us this week, Holly? Thanks, Pat. This past Monday, both the men's and women's basketball teams played next door neighbor rival Eastern University. The Lady Cavs fell to the Eagles 64 to 45. In the game, freshman Brittany Sandon scored a career-high 25 points. Overall this season, Sandon is averaging 14.3 points per game. In addition to Sandon's 25 points, freshman Colleen Stewart added 9 points and 4 rebounds for the Lady Cavs. In the men's yearly battle of Eagle Road, the Cavaliers came away for the fourth year in a row with a victory, beating the Eagles 89-71. Senior Dom Farello led the Cavs with 20 points and 6 rebounds. Prior to the game, Farello was honored as only the 15th member in Cabrini history to reach the elite 1,000-point club. In addition to Farello's 20 points, sophomores Corey Lemons and Goran Dulak each added 16 points. Here are some of the highlights of the game and an interview with men's head basketball coach. Hi guys, I'm Allie Radalico here at the Cabrini Dixon's gym. We just got finished the Eastern Cabrini game where Cabrini had the victory. I'm here with head coach Marcus Kahn. Excellent game tonight. Thank you very much. Now, the past three years you guys have beat um, Eastern and you know, do you think there was a lot of hype going into tonight's game with all the fans, both crowds are really into it? Absolutely, it's a great atmosphere for college basketball at any level. Um, it gets our guys a little more excited to come play with an atmosphere like this with basically the, both campuses over here in our gym, so it's a great atmosphere for them to play up and gives them a lot of extra energy that we need. Now, you guys have been really successful this year. You're undefeated at home. Now you're on an eight-game winning streak. What do you think has been the key to your success so far? Uh, good players, I think. Um, I think we have a good thing going. They're buying into what we're do trying to do as coaches, and um, we're playing hard every night we come out to play. And games like this are going to play extra hard, and uh, they, they know they got to, and they do it, so it's good. Now with that, you have had one downfall of the year. You've had one, only one loss in the conference against Marywood. You have them coming up on the 12th. What do you think you guys have to do to improve to get the victory this time around? Well, we just have to be more prepared. I think we went in there a little lax, long trip. We'll be in the comfort of our gym. Uh, you know, a little bit of a chip on our shoulder, hopefully, and uh, come out with a little more excitement and energy about what we're trying to do against Marywood and hopefully come right to win then. All right. Well, thank you very much. Excellent game again tonight. Good luck with the rest of the games this week. I'm Allie Rodolico here reporting at the Dixon Gym here at Cabrini College. Back to you at the news desk. Both the men's and women's teams are set to take on Immaculata University in a doubleheader Thursday night beginning at 6 p.m. in the Nerney Fieldhouse. That's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Holly. Now it's time for your red carpet rants with Danielle. Hey, guys. Danielle here with your entertainment news. Recently, a local Chinese restaurant by the name of Yang Ming was named the best Chinese food in America. Justin Silner and I obviously had to go check it out. Here's some clips from our Chinese food adventure. Recently, a local Chinese food restaurant called Yang Ming, located in Bryn Mawr, won the title of best Chinese food restaurant in America. Owner Michael Wei spoke to us about his restaurant and why he thinks he took home the award. And the success in this restaurant is we have uh, we have two kitchen in the back. We have different kind. Uh, we have two different chef. One is more like a Italian chef, and one is a Chinese chef. So we run it by continental food and Chinese food. And not too many restaurants able to do it. Yang Ming has a welcoming atmosphere and friendly staff. Make sure to check it out at 1051 Conestoga Road in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. If you're ever looking for a good place to eat, you should definitely check out Yang Ming. Justin and I loved it. In other news, after a 36-hour party binge, Charlie Sheen checked himself into rehab once again. Casey Jordan Sheen's so-called porn pal dishes the dirty details and said that the fun lasted about two and a half minutes, 
and he wouldn't stop kissing her feet. After all was said and done, Sheen allegedly wrote Jordan a check for $30,000 and still owes her $25,000. She must have some pretty amazing feet. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's check in with Ian for Just a Thought. Hi, it's Ian with Just a Thought. With regards to the protests in Egypt, I think it's important that we urge our government to work with the people of that nation to find their own democracy. The idea of democracy is not uniquely American, and we cannot continue to force our ideas of that word on countries with different values and cultures. Ultimately, we are not in charge of the Egyptian people. We cannot enforce our views on their political system, just like they cannot do so in ours. The people of Egypt started this fight for freedom, and they should finish it. Our job is to support them, not hinder them. I'm Ian O'Neill, and that's just a thought. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. That's all we have for you this week, Cabrini. Have a good weekend.